Hi, I'm Garvin DeShazer, and today we'll be hearing about one young woman who learned the value of working hard after taking wealth and physical health for granted. Enjoy, because this is your daily inspiration. It was 1928 in Harvey, Illinois, and 16-year-old Betty Robinson was in a hurry. Leaving from her school at Thornton Township High, she was about to miss the train and was now darting as fast as she could. Although she didn't know it, her science teacher, Charles Price, was aboard the same train. Charles was a former runner and the coach of the boys' track team. So when he saw Betty sprinting toward the train, he immediately recognized that she was fast though, he reasoned, not fast enough to catch the train. He was wrong. As the young woman stepped onto the train in the nick of time, it was obvious he was in the presence of an outstanding athlete. Betty Robinson was born in 1911 in Riverdale, Illinois. A high-spirited child, she played guitar and acted in school plays. Her family supported her in her endeavors, always encouraging her to pursue her dreams. In high school, when her teacher, Charles Price, spotted her gift for running, he decided to time her in a school corridor. There was no girls track team at the high school, but after seeing Betty's time, Charles suggested she started training with the boys. Within a few months, Betty qualified for the 1928 Olympics in Amsterdam. This was no small thing. At the time, it was believed that women couldn't run. They could swim and compete in archery, but never run. Betty Robinson was about to prove them wrong. At the age of 16, Betty Robinson set a new world record of 12.2 seconds in the Olympic 100-meter race and won the first gold medal ever awarded to a woman in track and field events. It was then that Betty realized running was no longer a casual hobby. She was now a trailblazer. After her win in Amsterdam, Betty made plans to secure a second gold medal and perhaps become a coach. Her plans might have worked out that smoothly had she not decided to break from her training one day in 1931 and take a ride in an airplane. The venture seemed to her like a great getaway, but it turns out, in those days, Betty wasn't the only one trying to break a record. I went through the papers from those years and you can't believe the number of plane crashes, says sports writer Joe Gergen. Somebody was always trying to break a record, going the farthest here or the fastest there. A lot of people stupidly thought that they could just fly by taking a plane up. It was like going out for a Sunday drive if you had a few bucks. The thrill ride turned deadly when the plane stalled just outside of Chicago and plunged to the ground. When Betty was found, she was unresponsive and hemorrhaging from the head. The man who found her believes her to be dead, says Roseanne Montillo, a researcher of Betty Robinson. And he took her not to the hospital, but to an undertaker. The injuries were extensive. One of Betty's legs was broken in three places. Her left arm had been shattered. A deep gash covered her right eye. But then the mortician noticed she was breathing. The doctors who saw her said she might never walk again, let alone run. Although she could walk early in her recovery, Betty often didn't want to get out of bed. But her brother-in-law had something else in mind. Every morning he would wake her up and take her for a walk, Montilla says, just a couple of steps. In time, those few steps turned out to be a short run around the block. His efforts fostered a renewed determination in Betty. When doctors told her she would never race again, she responded, Of course I'm going to try to run again. It would be useless for me to give up without at least an attempt to run. Betty continued rehab for the next five years. Unable to crouch at the starting line, she had to learn a new technique. It also impacted how she saw her teammates, says Montillo. Before, she hadn't really given any thought to it. They were just girls. But now, these were women who made huge sacrifices to get where they were, and she would have to be one of them. Still in pursuit of her second gold, Betty geared up for the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. 
She now faced not only steeper competition than in 1928, but an additional obstacle, money for travel. Her medical bills had taken a toll and she'd had to sell virtually everything she owned. Working as a secretary, she saved up money, enough to get to Berlin. It was clear she was proud to have made it, as the New York Times reporter that day nicknamed her Smiling Betty. It was a close race, with the German team temporarily taking the lead. In the end, the U.S. team won, and Betty Robinson secured her second gold medal. The smile on her face said it all. Betty Robinson died in 1999 at the age of 87. To this day, she remains the youngest 100-meter racer champion in Olympic history. At 16 years old, Betty Robinson learned an important life lesson. For most of her life, she had taken the privileges of material resources and physical health entirely for granted. Yet, with physical injury and poverty, came a maturity and awareness of the value of hard work. As a result of her renewed commitment and her redoubled efforts, she gained new strength, a closeness to her fellow athletes, and a discovery that the end reward was that much more delicious. What good things in your life do you take for granted? And what things have you had to work hard for that you may have come to see as drudgery or even resent? Which of those things made you stronger, happier, or wiser? Will you say, I am determined to work hard to find that treasure of strength within myself today? Thanks for listening. May your day be filled with love, laughter, and joy. Bye for now. Hi, this is Scott, producer for the Daily Inspirations podcast. We hope you're enjoying these stories, and if you'd like more inspiration in your life, visit MyDailyIAm.com. You can find weekend blog posts, sign up for our email update list, and you can let us know about an inspirational story you'd like us to cover. Or just say hi. We'd love to hear from you.